All right, everyone, now we have to address the rumors that were being spread around on Twitter the other day in the, the great leftist echo chamber about Camden disbanded their police years ago and their crime rate fell. <laughs> A casual look at the situation shows that that claim is pants on fire. I, I rate this as uh, the biggest lie that's being told by like the BLM Antifa sorts. First and foremost, Camden did disband its city police force. That part of the claim is true, but it doesn't make any difference because they immediately adopted a county-wide police force. What happened is, is the people in Camden, they realized because the community was so massively overrun with crime, very blighted, it's still not great today, although it's arguably better than it, than it was, uh, don't go through at night maybe, uh, what happened is they realized, well, the city police force lacks resources, number one, lacks coordination with surrounding areas, number two, and is corrupt, number three. We're gonna get rid of it, and we're just gonna have a county-wide sort of thing. So instead of a metro force, which is specifically inner city, and therefore reacts like an inner city police force, they chose to have a more broad response. Of course, in this situation, if you've got drug dealing and stuff, if you have one agency for the whole county instead of a bunch of smaller agencies that have to indirectly coordinate at times, it becomes more efficient. It becomes more, more money efficient because, of course, Camden has economic problems. So the idea that they defunded the police, they don't have a police force, is false. Number two, as to the reduction in actual crime totals, you have to understand that during the same period that they began drawing down the police force and establishing this new model, Crime all around the United States, by and large, dropped like a rock. Violent crime in the U.S., and most people are still unaware of this because of propaganda. The violent crime rate in the United States right now is at about a 40-year low. Until the last couple of years, it was at a 50-year low. It ticked up very slightly. It's, it's bottomed out. It's, it's as safe now in the United States as it was arguably at times in the 1960s. Oh, back in those nifty days, back with, with Leave it to Beaver and shit like that. Your odds in small town America, the suburbs and rural areas of getting shot or getting uh, uh, attacked or something with a deadly weapon is about as low as if you're in rur rural Switzerland. Really, the crime rate in the United States thing is largely related to a few inner city zones that are almost invariably run, by the way, by an extreme far left <laughs> political bloc like the Bernie crowd, not even the neolibs, the tough on crimers, by the way, with Biden, people like that. Uh, and, and, and are blighted. They're areas that are overrun largely with gang violence and cartel activity. That has nothing to do with small town America. Like the idea that gu the, the face of gun violence that the left likes to portray is some, some steroid using dude with a prep bag and a Gadsden flag and an AR-15. If they showed you the actual aggregated composite of the average shooter or, or considerable criminal, and of course I don't think that mere drug possession and D, DUI and stuff like that is in, it's in a different class from killing a bunch of people. The average person is an inner city gang member, literally has a gang affiliation, regardless by the way of what race they happen to be in. <laughs> there are, are gangs for every different group. Uh, that's just the truth, the statistical reality of it. Camden was overrun with crime and they decided to reform a police force that obviously wasn't able to do its job. They saved money. Things got better. You know, <laughs> incrementally. Of course, we're still talking about Camden. It's like saying, oh, the, the violent crime rate in Detroit dropped by 5% this year. Well, it's still the mess massively higher than the national average. But at least it's better you know, in Highland Park or something. Uh, again, don't go through at night. But yeah, the left is trying to use this as, a, as an excuse to push their idea of defunding the police. Like, well, if we just abolish policing, and I, I don't know exactly what they plan to replace it with um, for the purposes of property loss and, and victimization, I suppose that they, some of them want anarchy, uh, like the, the Antifa types, literally, because then they can, you know, kill people with impunity like they really want to do instead of worrying about people fighting back effectively. Now, some of these people, they want, you know, basically race-based police. Like, oh, we don't need to eliminate police. We just make, need to make sure that there are no white cops and <laughs> stuff like that. It's like, some of these people are nuts. And it's never going to happen. Uh, the idea that, that on any larger scale, these, these communities are going to get rid of the police and there won't be other police replacing them is not going to occur. If it were, as I discussed the other day, if you were to say, for instance, Let's say in Minneapolis, they truly decide, you know, the police force is too corrupt because of one killing, uh, one officer involved uh, death, and therefore we're, we're going to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Let's say they get rid of the police entirely. 
You already have armed citizen patrols in certain parts of outlying Minneapolis where people are getting together and, and doing like basically shifts every night, wandering around their neighborhoods with shotguns to make sure nobody loots or breaks in and rapes their girlfriends. <laughs> Don't you think that activity might increase? You'll still have police, but they won't have badges. They won't be, be restrained, by the way, by certain regulations that explicitly apply to police use of force and not civilian use of force, and they will eventually given enough time, be popularized enough so that it'll take off nationally. Yeah, yeah, you don't need a, a taxpayer-funded police force, maybe. You'll end up with privatized police. You'll end up with a corporate police force or a citizen militia, which is, by the way, far preferable. By the way, if citizens are policing their own community, a person lives in a community explicitly that they're policing, this is something we've talked about with police as a form of reform, that cops shouldn't be living 50 miles away from the area that they're actually operating in. They should have ties to the community they're policing. It helps to breed a bit more trust and cohesion, number one, and also it, it, it keeps them, if they do something wrong, they're going to feel more accountable. They have to deal with the people in that community, maybe walking the other way, whether they're in their uniform or not. Avoiding them, friendships broken and so forth, the trust of the community broken by that individual. That can be helpful. So if people are forming militias and, and they're operating just within a few blocks of their own home, they know these people. They're not going to randomly open fire on their next door neighbor, probably. They'll probably be less involved killings than with the police. And you've noticed, again, when you have a citizen militia, it seems like these rioters are much more reluctant to attack three or four dudes with Gadsden flags and AR-15s than a line of a hundred fucking riot cops. Why? Because they know how the cops will react. The cops probably will not deploy lethal force. They are constrained un un under the Constitution, no less. They're constrained in their activities. Unless given the order, they won't even advance. They'll just stand there and take your, your rock pelting. The dudes in Gadsden flags will open fire and blow your head off. It's as simple as that. You wanted to fund the police, expect it to be replaced by a bunch of muscular dudes with big beards who watch Duck Dynasty. Now, be careful what you wish for, Left. That's about all. Peace out.